Hello and welcome to my channel, Nicola Yoga. My name is Nicola. So before we get started, I'm going to remove my socks and I encourage you to do so too. So today I'm just literally going to go with the flow. So we're going to start in seated. So that can be an easy, or what they call easy sukhasana, or easy seated position. So that's cross-legged like so. Or you can sit with your legs out long. You can sit just easy, however it feels comfortable for you. Or you can sit with the heels in towards the midline, allow the knees to fall out of the sides. Engage through the sit bones, grow tall in the spine, shoulders pull back and down. Maybe grounding with the hands down on the knees. Slight tuck in the chin. Grow tall in the spine, taking some nice long deep breaths here. Maybe flat with the eyes closed or rest with your gaze about two or three feet ahead. Inhale through the nose. Exhale. Again, inhale through the nose. Exhale through the nose. One more time, inhale. And exhale. Then palms to face up now. Open to the seat. Again, inhale through the nose. Exhale through the mouth. Inhale through the nose. Exhale through the mouth. One more time. Raising the arms up, maybe overhead. Bringing the palms together as you gaze up towards the thumbs and float the hands down through the heart centre. Again, inhale up. Exhale forward. Inhale up. Exhale forward. Again, maybe flat with the eyes closed or rest with your gaze about two or three feet ahead. Maybe using the hands to guide you, bring the hands down to the ankles and bringing the soles of the feet together. Maybe getting two fists behind the hips and shooting the hips forwards and if you feel an ouch, shoot the hips back. Hands bind together, allowing the hands to maybe link about an inch back from the baby toe. Shoulders pull back and down, grow tall in the spine, tuck in the chin. And again, maybe flat up with the eyes closed or rest with your gaze about two or three feet ahead. Your choice. Inhale, grow tall in the spine, shoulders pull back and down, allowing the knees to fall out to the sides. In seated butterfly. Barakanasana. Breathe. So this posing encourages inward focus. Going inwards. Maybe just noticing what's coming up for you today. Breathe. Nice opening in the hips. Encouraging a gentle opening in the knees. And gentle opening the shoulders here. Slight tuck in the chin, keeping the shoulders back and down. Three. Just taking a few moments of silence here to settle in. slowly mindfully coming back to Sukhasana but folding in the feet the other way so if you have the right foot in first bring the left foot in allowing the knees to fall out to the side so Sukhasana is good for opening the hips gentle opening in the knees again engage through the sit bones grow tall in the spine shoulders pull back and down slight tuck in the chin breathe Inhale, hands up overhead, hands face together, 
hands are shoulder distance apart or wider if you have issues with the shoulders. Breathe. Opening the heart, opening the chest. Five breaths here. And then slowly, mindfully, bringing the right hand behind the right hip, left hand over towards the left side, right knee. As you gaze forward, shoulders pull back and down, engage through the core. Exhale, twist from the shoulders, twist from the waist. Breathe. So twists are detoxifying, they're also healthy for the spine, healthy for the mind. Feeling the stretch in the intercostals, the side body, the muscles of the rib cage, maybe the waist, stretching out the shoulders. Five breaths in. Slowly bring your gaze back to the opposite shoulder, stretching out the side of the neck, top of the shoulder. Breathe. And then slowly come back to centre, bring the arms back, inhale the hands up overhead. Again, same thing. So hands face together. Hands are shoulder distance apart or wider if you have issues with the shoulders. And if this is uncomfortable, you can even bring your hands down to the hips. Again, your choice. Breathe. Five breaths here. And then slowly, mindfully float the hands down, bringing the left hand behind the hip, coming in extension of the spine, as the right hand floats onto the outside of the left knee this time. Inhale, gaze forward, shoulders pull back and down, engaging the core. Exhale, twist. Now, if having the hand as an extension of the spine is too uncomfortable, you can walk the hand out maybe about four to six inches, depending on how long your arms are. Shoulders stay back and down. Breathe, so feeling the stretch on the intercostals, the muscles of the rib cage on that right side this time. Feeling a stretch in the waist, in the hips, the knees, shoulders, breathe. And then slowly walk the head back. Over to the opposite shoulder. Five breaths here. Feeling a stretch in the side of the neck, top of the shoulder, on that left side. And then slowly bring the head back to centre, bring the arms back in, hold the hands up over the head. Excellent. And how up. Excellent. Full. Inhale. Exhale. Forward. We're going to walk the hands forwards, keeping the hands at shoulder distance apart or again wider. Now you can either swing the legs around or slowly, mindfully start to engage with the core as you start to bring the hips forwards and slowly, slowly, slowly rolling onto the knees. As you can see, my legs are still folded. Now unfold the legs and make your way into that lovely cat and cow position. So four fingers point to 12 o'clock. Knees are underneath the hips, hip distance apart, allowing the tops of the feet to rest down. Now this is important because this will help your wrists. Curl the fingers so you only feel the pads of your fingertips and feeling the four corners of the palm of your hand. So as you can see, my fingers themselves are not resting on the earth, just my pads of my fingertips. So four finger points to 12 o'clock. 
not dumping the shoulders and gaze through the core. Inhale as you gaze up. To cat, sorry, cow or bittilasana, not dumping in the shoulders. Exhale, fold in. Ardha Madrasana. Rounding in the shoulders, feeling like the skin is stretching across the shoulder blades. Inhale, gaze up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, up. Exhale, fold. Three more following our own flow and pace of breath. Curl under the toes. Start to engage with the core as you start to raise the hips off the earth. Hover here, not rounding, not dumping in the shoulders. Breathe. And then float the hips up, coming into our first downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Savanasana. So feet stay at hip distance apart, maybe bending the right knee in towards the chest, and then the other, waking up the body. So this is also a full body stretch here. And if you want to go slightly deeper, Maybe gazing under the opposite elbow as you bend the opposite knee. Walking the dog. Taking your own lead. <laughs> Breathe. And how as you gaze forwards, bend the knees deeply. Step, walk or jump to Uttanasana. Forward fold. Fold in. Nod the head chest, shake the head now, inhale to a flat back, Adam, Adha Uttanasana, shoulders pull back and down, engage through the glutes, extend the neck long, micro bend those knees, listening to your body, breathe, slowly release on the exhale, inhale, float the arms back towards the hips. Inhale as you reach the arms forwards, bend the knees deeply, engage through the legs, start to come up. Slight tuck in the pelvis, nice open heart. As you gaze up towards the thumbs and down through heart center. Inhale up. Exhale slowly, mind please, you start to bend in those knees and start to dive in. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, release. Inhale, float the hands back, come all the way back up. Maybe a slight back bend this time, press the hips forwards, not forcing the body. Exhale, through heart center. Inhale, up. Exhale, slowly, mindfully diving in. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, release. One more time, sweep the hands back against the hips, bend into the knees, slowly come up. Slight back bend maybe. Exhale, through heart center. Inhale, up. Exhale, fold. So grounding down in the hands here, we're going to take the left hand to the midline. We're going to inhale the right hand up. Extend the neck long, micro bend those knees, bending the knee on the left so a little bit more engage the glutes. Breathe. Protecting the lower back. Again, coming into a twist. Slowly, mindfully come back down. Replace the hand, so bringing the right hand to the midline this time. Inhale, the left hand up. Again, extend the neck long, not dumping the head. Engage the glutes. Micro bend the left knee and bend the knee, right knee just a little bit more. Breathe. And slowly come back down. 
in half flat back. Exhale, release. Plant the hands down, step the right foot back, step the left foot back. Come forward slightly into a plank or plakasana, coming high on the toes. We'll come down to the knees, float the shoulders forward slightly past the wrists and then bend into the elbows, come all the way down. <sighs> Hands come underneath the shoulders, inhale baby cobra. Shoulders pull back and down, the neck stays in line with the spine. Exhale, release. <sighs> or maybe coming into full cobra, so we straighten the arms, hips stay down. Micro bend the elbows, shoulders pull back and down again, gaze forwards about two or three feet. Exhale, release. Or your choice, ground down through the tops of the feet, engage the legs and press up to upward facing dog. Slight gaze up. Exhale, float back to down facing dog. Walking the dog here. Keeping that micro bend in the knees, not overextending the back of the knee. Inhale, gaze forwards, bend the knees deeply, step walk or jump to Uttanasana. Forward fold. Fold in. Nod the head, yes. Shake the head now. Inhale as we bring that right hand back up. Neck extends long, bend into the left knee more than the right, keeping the right knee micro bend. Breathe. Now, if you want to go deeper, you can take the right hand to the crease of the left hip, opening the heart. Maybe gaze over the shoulder or down to the earth, depending on how stable your neck and shoulders are. Breathe. And slowly, like a ticking top clock, taking that right arm all the way, full rotation, planting it down, replacing the left with the right. As we inhale the left hand up, again extend the neck long, bending into the right knee, more than that micro bend in the left. And again, if you want to go deeper, bringing that left hand to the crease of the right hip, and breathe. Opening the heart, maybe gazing over the shoulder or gazing down to the earth. Breathe. And then like that ticking clock, full rotation with that left hand as you come all the way forwards. And how as you press into the hands coming into Prapada Uttanasana. So Forward fold on the tippy toes, so come up onto the soles of the feet, not dumping weight into the hands. Exhale, the heels back down. Inhale up. Exhale down. So we're using the core, so we're not dumping weight here. So again, like I said in the cat and cow, round the fingertips. Inhale, come up onto the tippy toes. Exhale, the heels back down. Three more. Flowing with breath, flowing with grace and ease. And a reminder, if you find yourself holding your breath, it's a good indicator you're going too deep. If you feel pain, please stop immediately, come into a resting pose. Or if you feel discomfort any deeper than a four to six out of ten, please go easier on your body. Last one. Exhale, release. Nod the head, yes. Shake the head now. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, release. Spread the arms out wide as you start to reverse dive, engaging through the legs, slight tuck in the pelvis, micro bend the knees as you open the heart, open the shoulders, and float the arms up overhead, slight back bend, press the hips forward. Exhale, three heart center. Inhale up, exhale fold. Inhale, flat back, exhale release, plant the hands down, step that right foot back to that 45 degree position. Heel to arch alignment or wider for extra stability. Come up onto the fingertips, 
Nice bend in that front knee, press the hips forwards, engage the inner thighs to protect the knees. Inhale, reach forwards, and then slowly float up to Virabhadrasana 1, Warrior 1. Hips still pressing forwards, gaze is forward, shoulders are back and down. You can even bring the hands to the crease of the hips if you have issues with the shoulders, listening to your body. Five breaths here. Should be able to see your big toe. If not, you need to adjust your position. Pivoting on the back foot, setting up for warrior two. So back foot comes to a 90 degree position this time. Hips are facing to the side. Inhale, full rotation of the arms, warrior two arms. Or again, you can keep the hands at the crease of the hips if you have issues with the shoulders. Maybe checking out the hands if you're using the arms. Making sure the hands are level with the shoulders. Relax the shoulders, maybe going that little bit deeper. Again, you should be able to see your big toe. Maybe gazing over the middle finger. Inhale as you Rotate the hand, palm facing up, taking the back hand down, the back leg, and gaze up towards the sun. Now from here you can keep your head gazing towards the baby toe, which will be more comfortable for the neck, more comfortable for the shoulders, or gaze forwards, or gaze up to the thumb. <coughs> Whatever works for you in your body. Breathe. And then slowly, mindfully, bring the lower arm onto the thigh, not dumping weight here. Reach the other hand forwards, only to that 45 degree position. So keeping the arm level with the body. So you see that nice straight line here. Breathe. Now, if you want to adjust your position, you can bring that left hand to the outside of the left foot and raise the right arm up. Your choice. Five breaths here. If you want to go deeper, you can bring that left arm underneath the left hamstring. Reach the right arm around, maybe linking the hands, binding the hands. Extend the neck long, not dumping the head. Breathe, nice opening the heart, opening the chest. And then slowly, mindfully coming all the way back up. Pivot on the left foot. Pivot on the right. So the right foot is now facing forwards. Bend into that front knee. Taking that left foot to the 45 degree position, we're going to repeat what we just did on the other side. So bend into the knee. Hips face forwards. Shoulders pull back and down and gauge through the core. Nice bend in that front knee. You should be able to see your big toe. If not, you need to adjust your position. Again, you can either keep your hands at the crease of the hips or you can float the arms up overhead. Shoulders fall back and down, slight tuck in the chin. Engage the inner thighs to protect the knees, keeping the hips facing forwards. Engaging through the front toe mounds and baby toe mounds. The heels on both feet. Breathe. Five breaths here. And then full rotation of the arms coming, setting up for warrior two. 90 degree position of the back foot this time. Again, you can keep the hands at the crease of the hips if you need. So keeping that bend in the front knee. Float the arms level with the shoulders. You want to go deeper. Checking out the hands to make sure they're level with the shoulders, then relax in, relax the shoulders. Should this still be able to see your big toe? If not, you need to adjust your position. You don't need to be this deep. You can have your feet closer. Breathe.
and then maybe coming down to the lower arm, not dumping weight here, and reach that left hand forward, so that 45 degree position, keeping that nice straight line with the body here, not dumping weight, using the core, neck extends long, breathe. Or again, you can bring the right hand to the outside of the right foot, and then float the arm up, level the shoulder. So the straight line is with the arms now. Breathe, not dumping the head. Engaging the intercostals. Breathe. Or if you want to go deeper, you can bring the right hand underneath the right hamstring and bring the palms together, binding the hands. Again, neck extends long. Breathe. Extended side angle pose. Tita Hasta Barakarasana. Breathe. And then slowly on the next inhale, come up. Pivot on that right foot. So both feet are facing forwards. Heel toe, heel toe, feet together. And then releasing that with a flow. Inhale the hands up. Exhale as you float the hands down. Micro bend those knees, listening to your body, nodding the head, yes, shaking the head now. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, release. Coming to the front of your mat. Inhale, as so we take the right leg back and the left, setting up for plank or downward dog, your choice. Inhale, come through your, your vinyasa, whatever that is for you, knees, chest and chin, or Chaturanga Dandasana, your choice. Exhale, back to the dog. Walking the dog here, maybe. Inhale, the right leg up. Exhale, bring the knee towards the nose, step up between the hands. And it doesn't matter if it takes a couple of strides to get there, that's okay too. And again, taking that back foot to that 90 degree position. Setting up for warrior two, Virabhadrasana two. Nice bend in that front knee. Inhale as we take the left arm full rotation like a ticking clock to warrior two. Breathe. Nice bend in that front knee, you should be able to see your big toe. If not, you need to adjust your position. Hips are facing to the sides. Relax the shoulders, maybe going a little bit deeper. Inhale, float the right arm, right hand up, and come back to peaceful warrior. Viparita, Virabhadrasana. As the back hand comes down the leg, and then take, maybe taking that left hand to the crease of the right hip. Breathe. And then slowly coming forwards to that extended side angle. Inhale back to peaceful warrior. Exhale, extended side angle. Keep going. Inhale up. Exhale forward. Full rotation of the arms coming back to warrior two. And then cartwheel the arms around, framing that right foot, pivot on the back foot. Very important that so both feet are facing forwards because you do not want to kick out the hip. And then spring off that right foot, taking the right to meet the left, and rest in the door. Three breaths here. Maybe dancing out the hips. And feeling that stretch in the shoulders. Coming back to a resting dog. Inhale, so we take the left leg up, three legged dog. Keeping that micro bend in that right knee. Inhale, the knee towards the nose, and step up between the hands. Pivot on that back foot to the 90 degree position, setting up for warrior two on this side. And again, gentle, as we pull the shoulders back and down, gentle pressure on the tips of the fingers. And then full rotation with the arms, warrior two. 
hips facing towards the sides. Keeping the pressure of the baby toe mound, front toe mounds and heels. So feel engagement to the earth. Feeling that stretch in the thighs. Keeping that micro bend in that back knee, protecting the knees. Engage the inner thighs, maybe engaging the glutes to protect the lower back and the, inner, and the knees. Making sure you check out the hands, level the shoulders. Gazing over that middle finger, relax the shoulders, maybe going a little bit deeper. Again, you don't need this really long set. Flip the hand on the left and float back to Peaceful Warrior. Viparita, Virabhadrasana as the back hand reaches down the leg. Or bring that right hand to the crease of the left hip. Again, gaze can be towards the baby toe, to the side, or up towards the front. And then creating that flow we just did on the other side. Inhale, lower arm towards the thigh, reach forwards. Exhale, taking it back, peaceful warrior. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. And then full cartwheel with the arms. Framing that left foot this time. Pivot on the right so that both feet are facing forwards. And then take that left foot to meet the right. And again, walking the dog here. And as we gaze forwards, bend the knees deeply, step or call jump. To Uttanasana. Fold in. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, release. Spread the arms out wide, coming all the way up. Tadasana on the mountain as the palms come together. Press the hips forward, slight back bend, gaze up. Exhale, three heart center. So we're going to come into a little bit of balancing. <clears throat> so going a little bit deeper than we normally do, so this is more of an advanced pose, however I will show you the gentler form of the poses. So grounding down through the left foot, curl up the toes, spread the toes wide, plant them down. Now this engages the arch support and the Achilles. Engage the muscles of the leg, slight micro bend in that left knee. And taking right over towards the left side, shoulders pull back and down, zip up the Uliana Bundo from your pelvic floor from your pelvic floor to the start of your ribcage. And then inhale as we float that left knee level with the hip. You can stay right here, shoulders stay back and down, grow tall in the spine, tuck in the chin, breathe. If you're not breathing, you won't be able to balance. And then from here, you may want to go deeper, so we're flexing the foot, maybe linking the hands together. Taking the hands to the knee and then pressing the knee in towards the chest. Breathe. Or if you want to go deeper, bringing the two piece fingers as the arm comes on the inside of the knee, two piece fingers come to the big toe. So Tita has to pan and pass and the shoulder pulls back and down. Maybe going deeper, extending the leg long, keeping a micro bend in the knee, keeping that shoulder back and down. Breathe. Left hand is at the crease of the hip. You want to go deeper, extend that leg out towards the right side. Breathe. Maybe floating the left arm up and gaze towards the left. Slowly come back whenever you're ready and come out the same way you came in. And shake it up. You may well feel that ache in that left leg. Breathe. So it's really good for the hips, really good for the legs. We hold a lot of emotion in the hips, so it's good to release that and shake it up. 
So we're just going to flow that out with a half sun salutation before we do the other side. So inhale up, exhale fold. Bend into the knees slightly. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana. Flat back, shoulders pull back and down, engage the glutes. Neck extends long, breathe. Excellent. Inhale, bend the knees deeply, spread the arms out wide. Reverse dive all the way up. Engaging the legs, might could bend the knees, tuck the pelvis, nice open heart. Inhale as we gaze up, slight back bend, pressing the hips forward. Exhale through heart center. Samasthiti. Standing mountain or to dust. And then we're just going to repeat what we just did on the other side. So grounding down through the right foot, curl up the toes, spread the toes wide, plant them down. Again, engaging that arch support, engaging the Achilles. So if you're a runner or you do a lot of hiking, this is good. So engage the muscles of the leg. Slight micro bend in that right knee, hands come to the hips, pull the shoulders back and down. Breathe at first, set up your drishti or gaze about four or five feet ahead. Again, depending on how tall you are. So something that isn't moving. Inhale as you take the weight over towards that right side, slightly engage the glute. Flowing the knee up level with the hip. Flex that left foot. Breathe. And then maybe linking the hands over the shin, bringing that left knee in towards the chest, shoulders pull back and down. Breathe. And then maybe going a little bit deeper, or you can stay right here, not forcing the body, practicing the hymns and non-violence. Two peace fingers to the big toe as the arm comes on the inside of the leg. And again, you can stay here, breathe. Maybe extending the leg long with a micro bend in the knee, pull the shoulder back, back and down. And then maybe floating the leg out to the side. Going a little bit deeper. Listening to your body, not forcing. Breathe. Maybe extending that right arm out to the side. And then maybe gazing over towards that right side. slowly coming back the same way you came in and shake it up. So you should feel that in your legs, your glutes. Nice full body stretch. You can even do this pose lying down and then becomes sleeping good toe pose. Or supta hasta parangustasana. Inhale as we come up to that half sun salutation, press the hips forwards, raising the arms overhead, exhale as we slowly, mindfully swan dive all the way down. Nod the head, yes, shake the head now. Inhale, flat back, exhale, release. Inhale, as so you bend the knees deeply, reverse dive, coming all the way back up. Slide back then. Exhale through heart center. Inhale. Exhale fold. And coming all the way down to that ball squat. So thinking that stretch in the toes. Hands come to heart center, maybe coming into a balancing pose here. Feeling that nice little toe stretch. Grows tall in the spine, tucking the pelvis, shoulders fall back and down. Breathe. Now if you want to go deeper, and this isn't easy, believe me I'll probably fall out of it, <laughs> maybe crossing, you can bring the hands down to guide you, maybe crossing the right leg over the left. And then again, set up your drishti, bring the hands back to heart centre, you can keep the toe down on the right or you can float it up, depending where you are, breathe.
slowly bring the hands back down and cross the legs. And just walk that out slightly. Just release that stretch in that left calf. And then maybe guiding the hands, stay keeping that nice rounding in fingers. So not too much dumping in the fingers here. And then cross the left leg over the right. You can bring that left toe down. Again, go tall in the spine. Hands come to heart center, maybe. And again, maybe floating that left toe off the earth. Being wherever you are, not forcing. Breathe. And then slowly coming back down. Again, walk out the legs, releasing that stretch in the calf on the right this time. And then bring the sit bones all the way down to the earth. Straighten out the legs. Legs extend out long. Inhale, float the hands towards the hips. Maybe shimmy shake the soft glutes away from the earth. Coming into Dandasana or seat Staff Pose. Shoulders pull back and down. Engage through the sit bones, grow tall in the spine, shoulders pull back and down, tuck in the chin. Breathe. Giving ourselves a nice little energy boost here. And then we're going to come into a form of Janusha Sasana, so head to knee pose. We're going to bring the right knee in towards the thigh. Now, if this is too deep, you can bring the foot down to the calf. Don't press into the knee, because you don't want to push out the knee. So you can bring it to the thigh a little bit lower, or to the calf, whatever works for your body. Inhale the hands up. Exhale as so we float the hands down to the earth. Now, you can either stay right here with a micro bend in the knee. You can even put a block underneath the knee, so not overstretching the back of the knee. Because believe me, if you do that, it takes a long time to heal. So listening to your body, focus in to where the stretch is coming for you right now. So that will be in the lower back. So this is good for the lower back. In the knee, it's good to release the knees. Obviously in the hamstrings, the quads, because this is a hamstring stretch, a hamstring release. Now, if you want to go deeper, you can take the two piece fingers to the big toe or bringing the left hand to the inside of the foot. So wherever you are, sweep the right hand back, opening the heart, and maybe floating that right hand over, only as far as your shoulder or body will allow you to go. Extend the neck long, not dumping the head. And then reach that hand over towards the, the big toe. And if you can hold on with the two piece fingers to the big toe, feel free to do so. With that right hand maybe. And then extend through both glutes. And notice how that changes the pose. Extend the head long, not dumping the head. Opening the shoulders, breathe. So it's really good for the waist, hamstrings, lower back, knees, legs, side body, rib cage and shoulders. Five nice long deep breaths here. And then slowly release the big toe, open that right hand, full rotation, bringing that right hand back wherever it sits behind the hip. Inhale as you point the left toe. Inhale the left hand up, press into the knee, coming into half wild thing. Breathe. Slowly come back down. Straighten out the legs, shake out the legs. Inhale up, flex the feet. Exhale, float the hands down towards Pashimottanasana. C 
seated forward fold. So hands come down to the knees, the ankles, the shins, or the feet. Now if you can reach the feet, maybe bring your hands to your heels, and maybe allow your elbows to come down to the earth, depending again how long your arms are. If you're not there yet, it doesn't matter. Be where you are, micro bend those knees, listening to your body. Extend the neck long, shoulders pull back and down and notice how that changes the pose, engaging through the sit bones. Breathe. So this releases the, the diaphragm. And this will encourage the relaxation response. So even though we are in a full body stretch, the only thing that can relax here is the diaphragm. And that is what encourages the relaxation response. So this is a pose that when, if you have trouble sleeping, I would encourage you to maybe, even if you're in your bed, to sit up, come into this pose. And this does encourage the relaxation response. You need to be there for at least 15 full cycles of breath. So deep breaths, breathe. Shoulders stay back and down. Making sure you engage through the glutes, extend the neck long. So this isn't head to knee pose, this is a totally different pose. And the fourth most important pose in yoga. And then slowly, mindfully press into the hands, around the shoulders, start to float back up. I'm repeating Janu Sarasana, but on the other side, so bringing the left foot in towards the thigh, and again, you can have that at the inner thigh, or you can bring it down slightly, nowhere near the knee, or bringing the foot to the calf. So depending on where you are in your body. So encouragement to be where you are. Flex the foot on the right, toe towards the nose, keeping the ankle in line with the knee, knee in line with the hip. Inhale, the hands overhead. Back, so as you float the hands down towards the knee, the shin, the ankle, or the foot, depending on where you are. Again, you can bring the right hand to the big toe or right hand to the inside of the foot and again if you want to go deeper sweeping the left arm at the back for rotation like a ticking clock as you open the shoulder and start to float that left hand over towards the big toe and if the big toe is free two piece fingers towards the big toe again now engage through the sit bones extend the neck long not dumping the head as you open the heart and notice how that changes the pose so you engage the side body the muscles of the rib cage the intercostals opening in the shoulder putting the stretch in the hamstrings the knee micro bend that right knee listening to your body feeling the stretch in the shoulder and breathe release in the hamstring on the right and giving a stretch on the quad on the left. Breathe. Again, stretching out the lower back. Good for herniated disc. Good for lower back issues. And also detoxifying, so coming into a twist. Breathe. And then slowly on the next inhale, we're going to inhale that left hand all the way back, wherever it sits behind your hip. Point the right toes, reach the right hand up and engage through the core as you engage through the heel and the knee. And reach up, taking the hips up to baby wild thing. Breathe. And slowly, mindfully coming all the way back down. Extend the legs long, shake out the legs. And then again, coming back, we're going to shimmy shake those soft glutes away from the earth. We're going to inhale the hands up. Exhale, float the hands down towards the feet. Breathe. So hands can meet the knees, the shins, the ankles, or the feet. Shoulders pull back and down. Extend the neck long, dumping the head. 
bend is from the crease of the hips. <coughs> Hashi Motanasana or seated forward fold. Five breaths here. Micro bend those knees. You can even bring your hands and or arms underneath your knees and give yourself a little hug here. Breathe. And then slowly pressing into the hands, coming back up. So as we went forward, we're now going to go backwards. So we can do a back bend. So depending again where you are, I'm going to rock and roll to massage up my spine. So we're rocking and rolling, holding onto the hamstrings. Coming to as if you're going to set up the bow. So nice 90 degree angle of the legs, point the toes. Shoulders pull back and down to engage the core, and then on the exhale, roll back. Using that pivot motion, come back up, engage through the core, so the feet don't touch the earth, and that's how you build on the core. Inhale. Exhale. Three more. Now on the third one, you can either come into Vipurita Karani, so rolling down back onto the back, allow the shoulders to release the earth, and allow the feet to come up towards the sun. Hands plant down against reaching past your hips, planting the hands down, shoulders are away from the ears, slight tuck in the chin, and then relax the ankles, relax the legs and allow the energy to come back to the hips. So that's Viparita Karani on legs up the wall pose. And you can stay there if that's where you are. Or we can come into assisted shoulder stand. So I come into it with a rock and roll. So again, I'm going to show you. And I do normally three rotations. Then I inhale, engage, roll up. Hands come to the lower back, keeping their elbows as close together as you possibly can, engage through the core, straighten out the legs, point the toes, neck extends along here, and in this pose you do not look from side to side. Keeping the neck in line with the spine, weight is in the shoulders, and this is really good for the Vishuddha chakra or throat chakra. Breathe. Engagement in the core. You need a strong core to do this. You need a good strong lower back. Now if you have plow in your practice, halasana, you can float the feet behind your head. If you don't have this in your regular practice, I don't encourage you to do this because this is quite deep. So if you do, allow your feet to float back behind your head using the core. On the exit. And if your feet touch the earth, you can straighten out the arms, allowing the hands to ground to the earth. Now your knees may touch your forehead, they may not. Breathe. And I like to go just that little bit deeper. If my feet are touching the air, if I float my feet back slightly, so I feel a stretch around my middle back, my lower shoulders. And I like to do this because I I'm also a massage therapist. I do the Indian head massage and reflexology, so I like to stretch out this area. However, again, be where you are. You may want to bend one knee in towards the forehead and then the other. So almost like a walking dog, but we're doing a walking plow. And just feel that stretch in that area. Breathe. And again, if you have knee to ear pose in your practice normally you may float your knees towards your ears 
However, again, if you don't have this in your regular practice, I wouldn't encourage you to do it. So bringing one knee in towards the right ear or the right shoulder, and then the other. And then fold in only as far as your body will allow you to go. Breathe. Slowly, mindfully coming out, straighten out the right leg, straighten out the left. Bring the hands back to the lower sacral spine. And maybe coming back through assisted shoulder stand, Salamba Sarvangasana, as we take the right leg up towards the sky, and then the left. Slowly, mindfully using the core, pointing the toes, engage through the core, engage through the legs. Next, so extends along, not looking from side to side in this pose. You keep the neck in line with the spine. Elbows are close together. And then slowly, 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 we are in an inversion. So slowly coming out of the pose, bending the knees in towards the chest. That's the easier way. Or if you are in advanced practice, you keep the legs straight and float the legs back over your head as you start to take those glutes towards the earth, slowly coming out with control, one vertebrae at a time. Three. Or keeping the knees bent, and again, slowly coming out using your hands for support, as you slowly bend your knees in towards your chest, feeling each vertebrae come down to the earth. And breathe, hug the knees in towards the chest, flex the feet, and rock from side to side. Maybe circling the knees one way. Massaging out the sacral spine. And then circle the knees the other way. Both hands reach out, level with the shoulders. Inhale as you gaze over towards the right hand, keeping the knees in towards the chest, flex both feet, and then slowly, mindfully, float the knees over towards the left side of the body. Now, it's more important to keep the shoulders back and down. The knees do not have to touch the earth. You can either set up with a block or books underneath your thighs or knees. Breathe. Coming into a twist. And it's always good to come into a twist after that inversion that we just did. Green. Slowly on the next inhale, slowly, slowly, slowly start to engage through the core as you bring the knees back to centre. Again, hug the knees in towards the chest, using the hands for support on the shins, and maybe just rock backwards and forwards a few times. And then again, taking the arms out wide, gazing over towards the left hand this time, keeping the knees in towards the chest, flexing the feet. As you slowly, mindfully on the exhale, take the knees over towards the right side of the body this time. Again, setting up with blocks or brooks if you need. It's not important to have your knees touching the earth. It's more important to have your shoulders grounded to the earth. So again, be where you are, not forcing the body coming into a twist, and breathe. And 
and then slowly on the next inhale, bringing the head back to center, engage through the core. And on the next inhale, slowly, mindfully bring the knees back to center. Again, bring the knee, hands over the shins and rock backwards and forwards. Coming into double wind relieving pose or Pavana Mukhtasana. And then from here, you can either finish in supine butterfly, bringing the feet together, allowing the knees to fall out to the sides, keeping that nice bend in the knee, knees. Again, you can set up with blocks underneath your thighs or knees, whatever you wish, if that's too deep. Allowing the shoulders to come away from the ears, palms come, arms come out to the sides, palms facing up, open to receive. Maybe bringing the fingers to Gaya Mudra, which is forefinger to thumb. Breathe, a nice long deep breath, inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Now you can either stay in this pose or you can come to sleeping teepee, which is bringing the feet out to mat distance apart, keeping the knees bent allowing the knees to fall in together just like a teepee frame or if you wish coming into full shavasana as you extend the legs long mat distance apart allowing the feet to fall out to the sides and breathe so whichever pose you prefer now we're going to stay in supine butterfly or supta Baddha Kanasana, bring that nice opening in the hips, releasing the pelvis, release all the points of the body resting on the surface beneath you, feeling supported by Mother Nature. As you come into a few moments of silence, finding peace in your practice. You can stay here as long as you wish. Or if you wish to come out of the pose, maybe rocking your head from side to side. Starting to wake up the body. Bringing your hands to the outside of your knees. If you're in supine butterfly, bring the knees together. Or if you're in Shavasana, bring the feet together and then hug the knees in towards the chest. Again, rock backwards and forwards. either raising one arm overhead as you rest with your head on your upper arm and take a breath here the other hand sits in front of the heart maybe straightening out the top leg coming back into seated or rock and roll back up to seated your choice and slowly coming back to the top of your mat maybe resting with your eyes closed or rest with your gaze about two or three feet ahead. Listening to your body. Either seated in half lotus, so one foot in towards the hip. And then the other if you're open. So a reminder, this is quite deep. So please don't force yourself into full Padmasana or full lotus. If you're not ready yet. You can stay in easy cross-legged Sukhasana or whatever seated position works for you. That can be kneeling or varasana, or whatever works for you. Again, hands bring down to the knees, again, through the sit bones, grow tall in the spine, tuck in the chin, shoulders fall back and down. Maybe resting with your eyes closed or rest with your gaze about two or three feet ahead of your choice. Just 
grounding down first and feeling the benefits of your practice. Breathe. Hands come to heart centre. Slight tuck in the chin coming into prayer. May you be healthy, may you be safe, may you be peaceful. Namaste. Now if you are in half lotus or full lotus, uncross the legs. And if you're going to bow down into prayer, do that safely before you do so. Namaste. I hope you enjoyed this flow. If you did, please hit the thumbs up button. And let me know in the comment section what you thought of this flow today. How did you like the big toe pose? Or how did you like the assisted shoulder sand or the plow? Let me know how that went for you or where you are in your practice. Let me know because it's great to hear from you. Anyway, please enjoy the rest of this beautiful day. Namaste. You are in your